Hello, this is Melissa. Today we are going to talk about smocked Christmas ornaments. I know several of you have probably purchased a kit and are looking for maybe some tips to help you do these a little bit easier. And um, that's what I'm gonna attempt to do today. I have already filmed and constructed um, several of these ornaments and I'm gonna show you, this is kind of a spoiler alert um, for what it's gonna look like at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what they look like as we get started. I have two different ornaments here. They are both smocked with the same design, but they're gonna be done in a little bit different way, different techniques. Um, for actually putting them together. And so through the video, I'm gonna go kind of back and forth between the two ways that you can do this. Either one is great. Um, either one produces a really beautiful ornament. The top and the bottom on the ornaments um, are the same for either one. We're gonna talk about that at the very end, how you do that. But to show you the difference in these, this particular ball, this is the Susanna plate from Children's Corner, by the way. This particular ball has a seam in the back that um, where my smocking you know, this is where one side of the pleated insert and the other side are joined. It's sewn together with a sewing machine. And um, this is the first way to do it. It's probably a little bit easier way to construct. Um, and so in the instructions, they're gonna be called easy. Although I will say that this is probably more of a moderate level um, of difficulty for all of these, but um, it's a little bit easier probably than the other way, especially if you haven't smocked before. And hopefully you've smocked before and have a little bit of them um, experience under your belt before you start a project like this. But anyway, so this is a really beautiful ornament. This isn't a problem for this seam to be on your ornament because we know that as you hang an ornament, there's always a backside. So if my tree is here and my ornament is here, um, we're still gonna have a really beautiful front side of the ornament, so that's great. So the other um, technique that I'm gonna show you how to do is an ornament that is smocked completely all the way in the round. You can see, you can't even really tell where the seam is as I turn this around. Um, it's really beautiful. This is the same smocking design as the other one. This is Susanna from Children's Corner, if I didn't mention that. Um, but there are a few differences in the way that you begin your smocking and you complete your smocking, and then of course, how you put them together. So we're gonna talk through both of those techniques in the video. Um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna be kind of be going back and forth and you'll probably have to speed up um, and slow down and go through, um, you know, watching maybe some portions that you aren't actually doing as you do the video, but I really thought it was important to show you both ways. Most of the time, if you plan it out, you can make your smocking match all the way around. Sometimes it's just not possible. Sometimes the way your pleats fall on your design, um, or if you have a design with a really, really wide repeat, you may struggle to get it to line up in the back, and that's not a problem. Our goal is to try to do this with this technique, but it really isn't always totally possible. So we're gonna do our very best, and I'm gonna give you some pointers on how to do it and make it look really beautiful. But I think either way, you're gonna have a really nice ornament um, for your Christmas tree. Anyway, come back with all of your supplies in a few minutes. You're going to need your pleated insert with 11 rows smocked. It needs to be 38 to 40 inches. If you have fabric that's a little bit heavier weight or medium weight, I would go with 38 inches because it makes it easier to get this top nice and smooth. Um, and you may just have to trim down your pleated insert if it's longer than that. So 38 to 40 is great. Um, 11 rows, you need a ball that is three inches. Now there's a lot of different balls on the mar in the market and some of them may be like two and three quarters or three and a quarter, but this is for a three inch ball. So do your best to find one that's exactly that size because that's what all of our, um, what we're building everything on as far as this Christmas ball. You know, there's a lot of different um, techniques and what techniques and ways to put these together that you can find on the internet through different sources. And this is just the way I do it. And you may find some things that you like better that you have tried before, but I'm gonna show you what I do and what I've done in the past to make them look really nice. And I think you'll enjoy um, getting these out year after year. It's fun if you have a little girl um, that you've smocked a Christmas dress for, if you have some scraps that you can smock an ornament that matches, that's something you can pull out next year and you can remember everything about um, that process if you like to do that kind of thing. So anyway, get your supplies together and come back and we will get started. So I've mentioned that we're gonna do two different techniques in constructing and making these ornaments, but the very first steps are all the same for either one, so that's what we're gonna talk about now. Go on and get out your pleated piece of fabric and you should have 11 rows pleated. If for some reason you don't, um, I know some of the kits have 12 rows pleated, go ahead and remove it to where you have 11 rows pleated across your fabric. 
and it should be 40 inches long. You need to measure your fabric and make sure that that is the length. Any longer than that and you're going to have real trouble getting the ornament to fit onto the ball later. So it, go ahead and measure everything. All you have to do is just, you don't have to spread everything out, but just measure, you know, like this going across and you'll have to be careful as you do it that you don't pull out any threads, but it's totally doable. But measure, make sure you have 40 inches and trim off any excess and then um, come back and we will do the pulling up. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that now though. So the first thing you wanna do is on either side, we need to remove one pleat. Um, we are just going to pull those out here and this is gonna give us a seam allowance for the um, for stitching it together later. So I've got one on this side. I like to do it where the threads come out the top of the fabric rather than um, on the wrong side of the fabric. So can do that to both sides. And my placement of my pleats is gonna give me a little bit wider seam allowance on this side and that is not a problem. And so, get those pulled out and then we need to pull them up. So go ahead and if you have any kind of surface that you can pan into, might be an ironing board or it might be some other sort of um, board like I have here, go ahead and pin one side down and I'm pinning with about a seam allowance on the side. And after you've done that, then you can come and you can tie off these threads. We're gonna tie them all just right up here at the pins and you have 11 rows. Um, so we're gonna have two at the top tied together and then the next two are gonna be tied together. The three in the middle are going to be all tied together and then we're gonna have two here and two down at the bottom. So go ahead and get all of those tied up to this point leave the other side um, free for now. Um, when we come back, we will do the next step. So now we're ready to tie off the other side. I have this left side done and we're ready to move over to the right side. I have cinched everything up to where my pleated area measures seven inches. So just count it along here and I put some pins in. I left a seam allowance on this side and put some pins in pretty close to this seven inch mark right here. And now we can just pull everything, just cinch everything up to where it is taut through here. Now, we're gonna tie these threads off a little bit different um, than you normally would with smocking an insert or, or pulling up pleated inserts or any kind of pleating. But these first two rows and the last two rows, we're gonna do differently. So I'm gonna get them out of the way. Um, the ones in the middle, the seven rows in the middle, we are going to tie up to seven inches. So I am just going to do that here on each of these rows. So there's one of them. If it ends up being seven and a half to eight inches, that's okay. I'm going to come down and do this one down here that's on this pin. Oh, I think I am, if I can get it untwisted here. So these are gonna be very close to seven inches here. So I pull these up in the middle, you'll be able to see how that is. And we're gonna do this. I'm gonna go back and tie these again another time off the camera, but for this first tying, I'll just do it like this for now. But we have, um, have those three tied up at, off at seven inches. Now the top and the bottom, we want to have a little bit of give and a little bit of movement for when we go ahead and do the construction later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie them off longer and they're gonna be tied off at 11 inches. So if this is seven, then 11 is gonna be right over here. So I am just going to move it, your, move it so you can see it a little bit, but I'm gonna tie the bottom two here at 11, and I'm gonna tie the top two at 11. Now, as you're smocking along, you know, your middle sections are gonna be seven, your two top rows and your two top bottom rows um, are gonna be longer. So, as you're smocking along, if you feel like you need a little bit more tension, you know, on one end or the other, 
um, these rows are very movable across the fabric. So you can just cinch them up, pull them up to whichever side you need them to be to help get it tighter on one side or the other. So go ahead and tie everything up securely. And when you come back, we will talk about smocking. Okay, let's talk about choosing your smocking design. Just a few things to know about that. Um, you can do geometrics up to a nine row um, design and you can do picture smocking up to a nine row design. Any of those will do. Realize if you do picture smocking, you're gonna have a good bit of back smocking to do most likely. We are gonna remove all the pleater threads in the central areas of the, of the fabric. So if you haven't back smocked in those blank areas, you're gonna lose all your pleats in those areas. So just keep that under, under consideration. But today we are working with all geometrics as far as what I'm gonna show you in this video. Um, up to nine rows is just fine. You um, have 11 rows, so that's gonna give you, you know, a holding row on the top and the bottom. This one right here actually has seven rows, and I think that's probably the most ideal size, really. You could do eight rows if you wanted, but with eight rows, it's a little bit, um, there's a little bit more thinking that you have to do, because in order to center this design on your fabric, you have to move up. Um, you have to alter your design by a half of a row. And you're not really changing the stitches, you're just moving them. Because this, this you can see there's a four and a five here on this eight row plate. Um, so that means four and a half is actually your center. Um, but over on your smocked insert with 11 rows, you're gonna actually have a very center um, row. So if you do eight, um, with four and a half at, at your center, that's gonna put your pleating threads just halfway in between on all of these. So totally doable, it's just something you have to think through as you're smocking. Anyway, like I said, seven rows or nine rows are ideal. I would probably stick with seven. I think that's easier. Um, and also once you get into smocking much higher, um, you really lose a lot of the design up here, covering it up with ribbons or whatever you use to hang the ornament with. So. That is what you do. Um, you know, I mentioned that we are we have um, two different techniques that we're going to use as we do this ornament. I'm going to start off by doing the one that's a little bit simpler and easier, and I'm going to go through all of the construction of that up to the point of actually putting it on the ball. And then once um, I've gotten to that point, I'm going to go back and do the other technique and show you how you get it onto the ball. And then when we get to the point where we cinch it up on the ball and then we do the topper and that kind of thing, that'll all be the same. So the next thing I'm gonna do is um, just talk through how you would do um, just the regular, probably easier method of the two as far as smocking. So um, all you're gonna do is just choose your design and you are going to start at the pleat, you know, just the first pleat on the left and you are gonna smock your design all the way across and you're gonna end it right just at the last pleat on that side. So that's really pretty easy. It's very straightforward. Just smock all the way across, smock all your rows, tie everything off, don't leave anything untied. Um, when you've done that, um, come back and we will get to the next step. But if you are doing <laughs> the other method where we're going to smock in the round, you need to hold off and don't smock yet. Wait and watch that video portion before you get started with the smocking. Okay, so with all of the smocking complete from the first pleat to the last, we're gonna get started stitching it together. Um, but a few things you've gotta do first. Next is to go ahead and remove the seven rows of pleater threads in the middle seven, seven rows. So you're gonna leave these top two rows and bottom two rows in place, remove everything else. After you've taken all of those out, get your scissors and you are going to um, trim as close as you can to the end pleater threads on both sides. So mine is probably a little more than an eighth of an inch here. You could probably even get a little bit closer. Just be very careful that you don't trim away this pleater thread because you need it um, as we get into putting it onto the ball later. So go ahead and do both of those things. Remove your middle pleater threads and trim everything down to where you have just a little bit right above and below the first row on the top and the first row on the bottom. And then we are going to stitch it together. So we know that it is not likely that our design is going to 
match up totally. You can see here that I don't have a continuous design, although my rows do line up and it looks pretty good. So what we're gonna do is stitch it to where it looks like this. You can use either a sewing machine or you can do it by hand, but all you do is put your right sides together and you are going to be stitching along here. Now you need to line up your rows. So um, I go ahead and line up here where my stitches are. If I can grab just one pin at a time, that's helpful. I'm gonna just put that together there and I'm gonna do this on the other side. And um, we are going to stitch these two ends together. Now something I have done that I haven't mentioned yet, but I think it helps, is I've gone to the iron and I don't know if you can tell, but I've pressed it where my very first pleat here is down flat. We are gonna try to stitch in this space between the first pleat and the second pleat. Um, it would make sense. You would think that you would stitch right here on this edge. Whenever you do stitch, try to stitch on the outside of the pleats. I've always gotten the gap. So I find that you get a little better result if you try to stitch between the first and the second pleat on both sides. So if you go in with your iron and you press that one pleat down towards the seam allowance, where there's a little bit more space between them, that helps, and you do that on both sides. And then um, we're just gonna make sure that our rows line up here, um, front to back, and you can go either to the sewing machine or you can do this by hand, but you are just gonna stitch right across here all the way across the pleats. Now, as we do still have these gathering threads here, it's gonna be a little bit easier with them if they are tucked to the inside as we're sewing them. So we'll try to do that. We're gonna to have to do a little bit of maneuvering with them later also, but try to get them tucked in um, kind of out of the way for this next step. So go ahead and go to the sewing machine and stitch right across here. Okay, I have everything stitched together. You can see here that the rows match up. The pleats look all right. Um, you have to let go of any perfectionist tendencies here when you do this because it's not gonna be exact. Um, but this is the part that's gonna be against the tree. It's not gonna be visible um, as you're looking at the ornament from the outside. So this is the backside of the ornament. You should still have your, um, your long pleater threads here on either end coming out of the front that you have available to use in the next steps of construction. And the next thing is gonna be putting this on the ball and doing the cinching up. As far as this video goes, we're gonna step back and go um, along um, with the other technique to show people how to do it that way. So if you're doing it this way, you're just gonna have to skip forward to the part where we start putting it on the ball and doing the construction because the rest of everything else is going to be just the same. See you then. Okay, switching gears, let's talk about the other way to do these ornaments. I have um, my smocking plate here that I'm gonna show you and show you how that I made this work. Um, so let's talk about what the repeat of a design is. So the repeat is where, you know, all smocking plates have a repeat. You know, this is where I would begin a repeat and I would end it right over here and start another one. So that point where you end one and start the other, the space in between is the repeat. Um, so the repeat on this one, you could call it between here and here, or you could call it between here and here. What I'm gonna do um, as far as this particular one is I'm gonna start right in here on this row on the left side of my fabric. The reason I'm choosing to start on this row is that this is the section where my fabric is gonna be joined, where one side is gonna be joined to the other. I like to have cables, these straight cables through there to do the joining. If I had chosen for this to be where I start, then I would have had these flowerettes to join and that's just a little bit more difficult to do. So if you have a choice, I would choose something like this. So what that means is I am going to choose the row of smocking that shows me where my repeat is, and that's gonna be this one. It's usually gonna be the one with the widest part of the motif or the design. And I'm gonna start over here on the left side, just like we started with our other um, and smocked all the way across from left to right. I'm gonna start on the left side with this down cable right here, and I'm gonna do this entire row first. 
And so, you know, it needs to be centered. So you've got your center row of pleating here and you would find your center row down here, move a um, space and a half up and start with this down cable here and work across all of these rows. So it's gonna go all the way across here. When I get over here to this side, I need to stop and do some thinking and planning about where actually I need to stop. So, um, you know, I started here with this. I'm not gonna come all the way. I started with this down cable. So when I get over here to this down cable, the one that's gonna be right next to the one that starts the next repeat, that's where I need to start because the stitch that joins the two is the up cable between these two down cables. So um, go across and when you get to the down cable um, that's right before the last one, that's where you stop. You would remove your needle from the fabric or from the floss, leave your long tails hanging out the top and stop at that pleat. And you're gonna stop, you know, when you'll get over here and you'll evaluate and see, okay, can I actually finish up another one over here or do I need to stop? When you get to a point where you realize you don't have enough pleats to complete another repeat, that's where you stop. And that's gonna leave you with some pleats that are unsmocked and that's okay. We're gonna remove those later. There's plenty of length in this fabric to not have any problem with leaving some of them off. This is why though, um, it's better to have a design that has a rather medium to small repeat. This one has about 11 to 12 rows and that's ideal. Um, if you got one you know, that had a really big repeat, you might have trouble as you got over here um, making it match up with um, the other side just because you might be having to remove a whole lot of pleats. And it's really better not to remove too many, you know, maybe more like the eight to 10 range over in here is probably better as far as the amount to leave unsmocked. So hopefully that makes sense. So you're gonna start with this row and then after you've completed this row, that's gonna tell you where your end point is and you're gonna complete all of the other rows all the way up to the point on that pleat. And all of your rows are gonna have your thread tails hanging long because we're gonna use those thread tails to connect to the other side in another step. So go ahead and get started with that, and um, you'll see in the next section of video what it's going to look like. Moving on, the next thing that you're gonna do is you are going to remove the pleater threads from these middle seven rows. These are the ones that you tied, um, you know, you tied off to seven or eight inches, so you can go ahead and remove all of those pleater threads. And when you do, you'll see that you get a good bit of stretch here into your in your piece, and, um, so we still have these long pleater threads up here at the top and at the bottom. Um, and I need to trim my fabric along here so that there's just a little small seam allowance here instead of all of this width. So what I'm gonna do is cut just right here at the knots on both of these, and then I'm going to pull out the pleater threads from those rows right up to that point. I still want them to stay in, and you really only have to do this on the one side, um, only on this right side. So we're gonna pull those out, and then I'm gonna knot them again um, where there's still some slack. And then knot as close as I can here to the end because we still want there to be a little bit of give in these rows for the construction aspect. And we won't leave these. Um, I'm gonna do some other changes to them here in just a minute, but um, so go on and do all of that. And then once you have all that together, you can take your scissors and just trim right along here so that there's you know, a seam allowance, um, quarter inch, three eighths of an inch, whatever you're comfortable with for a seam allowance. I usually do a quarter and don't have any problem with it, but if you like wider seam allowances than, than that, that's okay. But trim this along, being sure that you don't clip these um, pleater threads at the bottom and the top, and then we will move to the next thing. Okay, now we're ready for the rather finicky part of this process. Um, if you're trying to join your rows exactly, this is what you're going to do. We are going to thread one of these thread tails. I've chosen one in the middle just because I like to get the middle secured first and then work my way out but I've got my seam allowances kind of folded under here. And the first one's always the hardest one, but figure out where your pleat is, where this side needs to meet with this one. So it's gonna be right here 
in the very first pleat on this row and just take a bite out of it just like you were smocking it regularly and then pull it up. Now, like I said, the first rows are gonna be the most difficult to get just right. But once you get that in place there, then you are going to take your fabric to the back. So you're just gonna drop it back behind and you're gonna be working kind of in this circle here. I'm just gonna pull it out and I'm gonna leave it there just like that. I'm not gonna knot it, I'm just gonna pull my needle out and I'm gonna be real gentle with this from here on out. This is why you want your thread tails to be pretty long. So I've got that one in there, it's secured in place, but it is not knotted. So you know, just have to be really careful and you keep these as tucked in as best you can and we're gonna to go to the one right next to it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually trim this a tad bit so that I can get it threaded. And like I said, this is the finicky part of this whole process. So I'm gonna go up here to this next section, and it's not gonna actually probably look quite right until we are able to pull them tight. But I've got that row right underneath in place, and now I can drop my thread to the back and I'm going through this seam allowance on the right side, straight to the back, just like you were ending your smocking any time, but you can't pull it too much because you don't want to pull your thread tails out. So I've got that one pulled. And so these are the two stitches that I've just done here. They look a little bit loose now, but once we knot them up in a minute, they're gonna get better. So then we're just gonna move on down to the side and do all of these, um, join all of these rows all the way down. So, um, you know, this last one here is always just gonna go right into your first pleat, right there at the thread where the other one was coming out. You're just kind of pretending that you were already there at that point anyway, and then you just pull it tight. You don't have to do any other stitching. The pleating, the smocking will actually hold it in place. Now, you know, um, when you are working on children's clothing and your smocking, you do want to be pretty careful about getting good knots in place. And we are going to put some good knots in place. But with this process, you know, this is not something that's going to be, this isn't like a tennis ball that we're going to throw around the house. This is going to be something that um, hopefully is handled with care. So it doesn't have to be the strongest, securest thing at the back, just enough to get it. Um, I've always just done the smocking stitches and it's done just fine. Now, if you happen to be doing a design or you don't want to try to get all these rows to meet up as you go along, all you're gonna do is um, place everything together and stitch it with just some regular sewing thread. So you would just get, you know, in this case with my white fabric, um, the fabric is mostly white, I'm going to um, just get my regular sewing thread and stitch those the first pleat and the last pleat together and those rows may or may not line up and I can't get this thing knotted or there we go so now I'm down to this red row and you can see there's always a little bit of maneuvering and refolding to do here but if I put it here together you can see this is an up cable I'm going to go right underneath this other up cable and put the down cable between them Pull it up like that, and then I'm going to drop it to the back, and I'm going to go through the fabric of the right side here, the right-hand side of this seam allowance. And so I'm going to continue to do this on all of the threads, and once I come back, um, I will show you how, what we're going to do about getting them all knotted in place. So everything's joined together and everything is pushed to the back, all of the thread tails. So the next thing that we need to do, actually here's where my joined area is. It's really very hard to tell, but um, what we're gonna do now is very gently turn it inside out or outside in as it might be. But um, just trying not to stretch too much along that area where you have your threads pulled through. Just gonna turn it the other way. Now it's gonna look rather messy on the back because I've got all these thread tails, but hopefully they're all coming out of um, 
out of one side of your seam allowance here. If, there, if you've got some over on the other side, it's not a big deal. But um, So what I'm gonna do is give a good tug to each of these threads just to make sure that the, it, what I'm doing is I'm pulling up that last stitch kind of taut. And I'm not pulling really hard. I'm just kind of giving it a gentle tug on each one so that I can be sure that that last stitch kind of solidifies and holds itself in place. And so once you've done all of that, you can um, go ahead and knot these individual smocking threads. Actually, that's two sections of thread there, but knot each of those. You can trim them off after that and then flip it back around to the outside. So after everything is all knotted together in the back, you have it turned the right side out, and we need to trim these wide edges over here. And what you're gonna do is pull these last pleater threads where they're pretty taut so that your pleats are pretty close to each other, and then trim all the way around as close as you can get to the pleater thread without cutting it. Please don't cut it. If you do happen to cut it, you'll need to take a needle and thread and run through each pleat all the way around so that you have something to cinch it up with later. Hopefully that won't happen, but trim as close as you can. Mine is probably about an eighth of an inch. So you're gonna do that on both sides. So trim all of those up and then we are gonna get, um, after that, we're gonna get our um, ball out and you are going to place the um, fabric around it like this and maneuver everything where your you know smocking is distributed rather evenly all the way around making sure that this center line all the way around the ball is pretty much in the center of the ball so go ahead and do that trimming on both sides and get your ball on there and then we will come and talk about the next step This is the part of the construction where it's helpful to have some kind of cup to place your ball in so that you can work on the top of it um, and not have it roll around on you. So I just have this little hot cocoa mug of my daughter's. It's a really good fit, so I'm gonna use that. So first of all, go on and just put your ball into the fabric and straighten everything out so that your pleats are distributed evenly all the way around so some aren't mo more bunched up than others. And then I usually go ahead and put, you can see I have some pins in here just interspersed a little bit just to kind of hold them in place in the middle. So that's gonna help secure everything and they're just stuck straight down in the middle. I'm not gonna leave them there forever but they're gonna hold it in place now. And so now what you have left is your styrofoam ball with your fabric, and then you've still got these long threads up here. So what we're gonna do is trim off the knots on both of them so that they are independent of each other. So on this particular end, I've got two blues and I've got two yellows. So, now we can use these to cinch up the ball. Um, it's also helpful if you have a lot of pins. And I'm just gonna initially pull all of them up together, kind of snug like this, and then hold it and put some pins in kind of all the way around. And I wanna try to get it kind of right in line where that lower thread is gonna be. And I'm just gonna stick pins straight in all the way around to just kind of hold this shape in place. I'm trying to hold it with my hand in the back and they are gonna pop up a little bit here until we get it tied. But you can see once I've cinched it down a little bit, it will somewhat stay and I can get this um, just kind of tightened down if the pins are helping me hold it. So I've got those all the way around. They're right at the level. It's ideal if you're kind of right below that little pleater thread that's in there. But so once that are, they are like that, you can grab, you would grab the two top ones, the ones that are closest to the top of the ball, and we're gonna cinch them up together. And I'm gonna kind of just start, I know this is hard to see, but I'm going to start with just kind of a partial knot here, just running it through one time, and then we're gonna pull it up 
and see what we get here. You can see how nicely that comes together just like that. So now I'm gonna put a pin right there, right there as well. And then I can use that pin to kind of tie around it as kind of a little bit of tension there. It's hard to show this on the video, but I'm gonna just tie it snugly as I can. You can take that pin out. You can see I kind of didn't get it quite tight enough, but if you didn't, you can always cinch it up a little bit more. And this has happened to me before, but and then you can just put a pin in through the space between those needles to hold it together, or those threads to hold it in place. So this little pin I just put in is going to stay and be a permanent part of this ornament, which is no big deal. It's sticking way straight down in the middle. Um, that's what you can do if you don't get your knot tight, not tight enough the first time. We're gonna go ahead um, and do this second one. Um, a lot of times you'll get a pleated piece of fabric um, that has these threads that are the same color as your um, as your fabric, like these would be white, and that is really ideal. It makes it a little harder to see as you're working with stuff, but it does enable you to hide these knots a little bit better later. But really, the um, ribbon that we're gonna do is gonna cover all of this up later. So once you get those all knotted in place, um, you can take either some craft glue or you can take hot glue and you can put down here in this spot and that's gonna kind of hold everything together. And you need to let that dry for several hours if it's craft glue and you're gonna have both sides done the same way. You can see I've got a lot of pins in this one as well and I've got my knotted threads right up here at the top. So once you've got that done, you are almost finished. You can see this ball here so is the one we've been working on the whole time, of course. It has 11 rows, so it has a smaller hole than this one, which had, I, I just did 10 rows on this one. So just showing you the difference. If you happen to do 10 rows rather than 11 for your smocked piece, it's still doable. You're just gonna have to have a bigger um, top and bottom to cover up everything, which it's gonna be just fine. But 11 is really the ideal size. If you did any more than that, you wouldn't be able to get this pulled up very tight in here. So once you have it glued and everything tied up, you can remove all of these pins, except if you happen to have to have one to secure your thread right up there. So once you have a little bit of glue on that, you, you would leave that pin in place, but it would all stay together. Um, with your ornament after that. So once everything is pulled together tightly and glued, you can come back and we will work on the ribbon. So let's work on the topper and the bottom for this little ornament. Um, you know, you can do anything you want. Um, if you've bought a kit, you're gonna have some ribbon in it and you can use the instructions um, that I'm gonna show you and on the blog also. It's the traditional way that our ornaments have been done, but there's lots of other things that people do um, to finish these off. One thing I've done in the past is do um, the bow on the top, like I'm gonna show you, and then on the bottom, just get a piece of felt and glue it in place to cover that bottom hole. And really the only benefit of that is it kind of gives it a flat surface to set your ornament down on just for storage, that kind of thing. If you want it, so if you wanted to do something flat on the bottom, consider just getting some felt or a, something like that that you could glue in place. But I'm gonna show you how to do the ribbons on the top and the bottom. Now you should have um, a long length of ribbon, probably more than you're even gonna need, but to start with, you need to cut um, a 12 inch length and then three six and a half inch lengths. We're gonna start with a 12 one. I'm gonna put this together using pins um, because I think it's a little easier and less messy than doing with glue, or I have found it that way, and then we're gonna have some glue at the very end. But take your long one first, and you are going to wrap it around your finger. This is just a little decorative loop that's going to be, um, it's gonna be right in the very center top. And then, you're gonna make another loop with this long length. And this is gonna be what's gonna hang from your Christmas tree. If you think that that's longer than you want it to be, you can always shorten this piece. You know, you could make it 
shorter if you like that um, to where it was only this long, you know, just by cutting this end off. So whatever you like, I'm just gonna keep it the regular length, but so you should have your ribbon that looks like this. Now, I have some pins here that I am gonna stick right down in the very center of these layers that I have. It's nice if you have a pin, like if you're using red ribbon and you have a red pin, that's a nice touch. If you don't have that, that's okay. But um, I usually have some pins that I've held on to through the years, like you can see this one's a little bit bent. Um, we're gonna end up leaving some pins in this ornament. So if you have old pins that are bent, that's always a good choice. But I did wanna use a red one since I have red ribbon here and I happen to have red pins. So we've got that just stuck on there like that for now. I'm gonna lay it down and we're gonna to go to these others. And we are gonna make a figure eight with these. So you're just gonna loop it around halfway and loop it around the other way. And then we are gonna take this and we are gonna stick the pin, the same pin that's on here, right in the center of this, being sure that you catch all of the layers right in the middle. So it's gonna be just like this. That first one is on and we can just set it down. It'll stay in place and we can kind of manipulate everything and straighten it up later. So we're gonna do the same thing to the next one. Like I said before, you know, these ornaments are, it's not like a ball that we're throwing around or playing with. These are not ornaments that I would let children play with just for the simple fact that um, they've taken a lot of time and effort and we want them to stay pretty. And um, so, you know, they, they are, we are gonna end up with some pins in them and that's okay, but they're really not to be played with um, if you want them to last for a long time, which, I do. So do the same thing with your third ribbon here. If you're concerned about these ribbons spraying, you can always fray check them. I haven't had trouble with that myself, but if you wanna do that, go right ahead. Um, anyway, so then you can take this third figure eight and send it through also. So now we have all these layers here and I am just gonna kind of turn them around to where these figure eights are just kind of pleasing and all in the center. It's hard to tell, I guess I could hold it up like this, and you can see how they will all end up being um, all stuck together. Now, um, I'm gonna go in and stick mine on the ornament up here now. Truthfully, I have not let my glue dry all the way. It would be better if I had let it dry, but just in the essence of time, I am gonna go ahead and just stick this down in the very center of my ornament. I will also say, be careful if you happen to have a motif that has an up and a down that you're putting your top ribbon on the top. This one actually does have an up and down because you can see there's little tiny leaves below the flowers on this design. So just pay attention, but just stick that pin right down in the very center and you can Stick it down hard there, and this is what it's gonna end up looking like. Now, if you want to add some more glue around here, around these edges, that's always a good idea, but that pin is gonna be the main thing that holds it in place, plus the glue that's underneath there drying, and we're gonna add a little bit more. But this is what your top is gonna look like when you're done, it's really pretty. And then um, we're gonna turn it over and do the bottom in just a second, but you can go ahead and do the top. Do it on top of your little cup so that you um, can reach it and everything. And then we're gonna flip it over and flip all this to the underneath and do the bottom half next. I flipped it over. I added a touch more glue up here at the top and I have three more pieces of ribbon. I have three more that are six and a half inches long and then I have one more little piece that's three inches long. And I also have another pen, another red pen. Um, I'm gonna take my three inch one and I'm just gonna loop it around into a small little circle. This is just a little decorative loop on the very bottom. And I'm gonna take my pen and stick it right through the very center. And then I'm gonna discard that to the side for a minute and I'm gonna go ahead with these figure eight loops like we did before. So I'm gonna do this first one 
And really, if you want these to be a little bit smaller than the ones on top, you could shorten it up. You can do a lot of things with these. You know, some people might just put a button on the bottom. I mentioned the felt. There's so many options of the ways that you can finish the top and the bottom of these. This ribbon that I'm using here is about 3 eighths of an inch wide, but you can also use, you know, wider ribbon, half an inch ribbon. This is a grow grain satin ribbon is probably what you'll find in most of the kits that Children's Corner sells, but you can really use whatever you want. Um, I've done some really cute ones with um, striped ribbon before, so anything that you like will work as far as this goes. I am still just doing the same thing like we did last time, making the figure eights, sticking it through the middle of that pin. The instructions tell you to glue this in between each one. I haven't um, been doing that. This has been working for me, but if you want to glue, you most certainly can do that. Um, so I've got this all put together here and we're ready to just stick it on right there on the bottom, right through the center of the ornament. Okay, here we are with everything finished up with this ornament. You can see that I have um, got everything put in place. I actually added an extra pin on the inside and I've added some glue kind of around the outside of this circle to kind of help hold things down, but it looks really nice on the top and on the bottom. I wanted to show you this one, which is one that we started out with also. And this fabric was a little bit heavier and my um, rows have probably ended up with a little bit longer length on my fabric. This is why I said at the beginning, um, you know, maybe 30 inches, 38 inches might be a good length if you have a little bit heavier weight fabric, which is what this is. It's not heavy, it's just heavier than my other one was. But what I did as I was troubleshooting to finish this one up is I added some more pins up in the top to hold these pleats down a little bit better. And they are covered up by the ribbon that's up here. But sometimes if you can't get things cinched down well enough with your thread, pins are your friend. So these pins are going to be sacrificed into this ornament forever and live here, but they are covered up by the um, ribbon up there. And you can actually, can go back and put a little bit more glue to kind of hold things down where everything stays covered up. But that's what I had to do on this one to finish it up. And it still looks really good. It's gonna be really pretty on the trees. Both of them will be, um, but anyway, that's what they look like as they're finished up. And good luck. I hope that you have fun sewing these, smocking these. Um, happy sewing, happy smocking, and happy holidays.